Welcome to Your Family Dog, a podcast dedicated to helping families love living with dogs. Here are your hosts, Julie Fudge-Smith and Colleen Pilar. Welcome back to Your Family Dog. I'm Colleen Pilar, and I'm here today with Julie Fudge-Smith, and we were talking about what we should talk about today, and Julie said that she had learned a few new things recently as a result of her dog, Zuzu. And I said, let's do it. Let's talk about lessons Zuzu taught you because Zuzu is a genius teacher. She is full of life <laughs> lessons and things that we need to know. So what do you think, Julie? Where should we start with the lessons that Zuzu has taught you? Well, I'm, I'm going to talk about Zuzu and coffee, coffee. the first one. Coffee. Um, is Zuzu yes, a coffee she... aficionado? <laughs> no, but she did... I think she did pull a coffee filter out of the trash the other day, but that's, that's not the lesson. <laughs> that's not I the lesson. <laughs> that's not the lesson. What happened yesterday was uh, people need to understand a little bit about my scenario here in Princeton. Um, since I am, am not training for the year and I, I'm, I'm working on, on doing various writing projects. Um, I, I write at home and it's basically me and Zuzu all day long. So I can take her for her walk whenever it's convenient for me. So yesterday, when I found usually right around 10 o'clock is a good time for me to take a break and she and I go for a nice long walk. So there's a stream nearby, we walk a few blocks over to this stream. And if nobody's on the path that goes along the stream, and there's usually not very many people around at 10am, I let her off her leash and let her run through the stream. Okay. And she's very good. And we get to the to there's a part where there there's a trail that leads off to the right. No, the left. I don't know right from left. But anyway, it goes that way. Goes that and way. Um, goes that way. So I call her to me. And th today, that yesterday, I decided that instead of going up the street, we would go back down the stream and go a different direction. Now, I had made myself a latte that morning and had put it in a travel mug and taken it with me. So I had Zuzu on her leash, and I had my bait bag, and I had her leash in one hand and my travel mug in the other. So Zuzu's going back down the stream. When I look up, and I see an elderly gentleman with his dog. So I call Zuzu to me, put her on her leash. But there's something that made me go. She's all excited because she's got another water. And so we're jumping, and we're having a good time, and we're shaking. And, oh, look, Mom, there's a really cute little black and white dog up there. And instead of being right at my side with her leash being short because I couldn't use two hands to bring the leash in effectively because I sure as heck wasn't going to put down my latte. <laughs> right? She's now in front of me about two feet. Mm -hmm. She's still on her leash. She's not completely out of control, right? But this gentleman moves over to the side of the path opposite of us and tries to reel in his dog. Zuzu crosses in front front of me to go over and say hi to the dog before I can do anything. This dog at Zuzu, right? Zuzu, because she is who she is, doesn't back down. She doesn't fight, but she's like, oh, I think he's just talking. And she goes in to talk for more, right? <laughs> and the dog and the dog around snapping. And so I finally get her out of there. And I felt, and the, and the man apologized. I said, oh, it's not a problem. It's, you know, just as much my fault. I felt really bad mm -hmm. about that. I felt bad about that for a couple of reasons. I felt bad because, one, I know better. Mm -hmm. I know better than to try and do too many things on a walk with my dog. If I'm out walking with my dog, my responsibility is to take care of her and to make mm -hmm. sure that I keep her and other dogs safe. And having that latte in my hand prevented me from being effectively using my leash. Mm -hmm. And as a result, because I did not effectively get her by my side so that she and I, so that it would have been her on my right side, me, the other dog, and the gentleman, that I could have moved her effectively past. I, one, caused a dog to have an incident that was unnecessary. Obviously, this dog has issues with other dogs. I don't need to encourage that, and I don't really want to encourage a dog to practice a behavior that's not productive for it. Mm -hmm. And I put my own dog in the position of being snapped at. And she was just fine. She had plenty of pieces of beef afterwards. But I didn't need to put her in that position. I, I didn't need to put that dog in that position. And I just felt like I should know better. I should know better than to try and do too much on a walk. So the killer is this morning, I get, I get Zuzu. It's about 10 o'clock. 
I put her on her harness. I made a pot of coffee. And I nearly poured myself another travel mug of coffee. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, oh, my goodness, can she be taught? Um, Which I didn't do. (laughs) We had a very effective walk. We went down the street, ran up and down the street. There was no other dog. So I probably could have done it today. But what I was going to say is, is that was something, it was just a reminder to me and, and something that I'm known mm-hmm. and, but everyone's going to need to remind it that when I'm walking my dog, that's my job. Mm-hmm. My job is to walk my dog. It's not to talk on my phone. It is not to drink coffee. It is not to go shopping. Yeah. It is to pay attention and take care of my dog. And that was a, it, it was, luckily it was a lesson learned without any terrible consequences yeah. having happened. What I will say, though, is that the day before that, at the very same creek, I did something really well, which I was very pleased with. <laughs> Zuzu and I were heading towards the creek, and as we get closer and closer, she's like, I know it's coming, I know it's coming, I know it's coming, I'm just, we're going to get the creek, we're going to get the creek. Well, as we get close to the creek, another little dog comes around the corner on an extended leash, which is fine, and <laughs> they meet, and I said, is your dog friendly? And she said, is boy or girl i said it's a girl she's oh then it's fine so apparently perry doesn't like boys perry just likes girls and perry and zuzu met had a very nice interaction and they were headed down the same path and i asked her i said normally because zuzu's looking at me like hello hello we're supposed to get off the leash right so it's got the leash and so i said i asked her i said would you mind if i took zuzu off her leash and let her run in the creek would that be okay with you and perry and she said that's fine And I did. And it was fine. She and Perry went on down the road. Rock, she just was enchanted by Zuzu playing in the water. But it was one of those things where I realized I didn't need her permission to let my dog off lead. Mm -hmm. That was my choice. But asking her permission gave me information about whether or not it was a good idea Mm -hmm. to let Zuzu off her lead. So I think sometimes that if asking permission to do something that you may have a right to do or is is also something that you can use as a way of gathering information to decide whether or not it's a, you may have the right to do it, but is it a good idea to do it? Right. So I felt like I had actually done really well the day before, and then I messed it up with the with the coffee thing. So well, one of the things- even asking for permission could have given her, even if she would have said yes, let's just assume that she was holding coffee or doing something else that tells her that this is a moment that she's going to want to be more attentive to her dog, even if nothing major changes, right. just like just to be paying attention. Because I, I do think the whole idea of, you know, I can I can let my dog do this because this is okay by the rules here is great. <laughs> but we also need to to take into account how others are are going to be affected by our actions. And so just asking her, you know, if she had said no, then you're like, well, I'll be waiting five minutes because then you'll be gone. You know, that that would yeah, not have been the, we'll the biggest impact on your day. Um, so I think that's a really good, see how good Le- Zuzu is. She's teaching you all these wonderful lessons. <laughs> she is. Well, the, the other thing, and then the, the people walk their dogs a lot in, in, in Princeton. On a nice day, I, I, we tend to run into a lot of people. And most of them are really good about allowing our dogs to meet. But one of the other things that Zuzu has taught me is that, and she's just, she's such a friendly individual. She, she just loves people. Like somebody will be sitting on the, on the bench on Nassau street and Zuzu will just go over and sit down and like, hi, and lean in. Or if somebody stops to pet her, she just leans in and like, oh, you are my new best friend. I, I didn't know that. I mean, it it reminds me of a line from, um, from a movie, which is, I, I I never knew you're everything I always wanted, Mm -hmm. which is Susie's approach to everybody. I never knew you were the person I've always wanted. And (laughs) so she leans into everybody and they love her and she gets lots of of pets and stuff. But it's also a reminder to me to watch people body language. Mm -hmm. Suzu has taught me to be very, very aware of how people are Mm -hmm. because not everybody I've come to realize um, (laughs) loves my dog the way I do and I don't expect them to that's that's the other thing is I don't expect them to but Zuzu has taught me to pay close attention to people's body language Mm -hmm. because because of the fact that she in general loves everyone she's met with it with an unbridled passion not everybody is going to love her back in the same way Mm -hmm. and so I am very careful 
Um, especially we have um, Princeton in school is a very multicultural environment. And there are many cultures in which dogs are not nearly as uh, well thought of, shall mm-hmm. we say, or as, as well loved. And so I have to be very careful in paying attention to body language because there are some people that just, they, they may not, they freeze. There's a lot right. of freezers. There's a lot of freezers. And that's important to, to note because, um, you know, I don't, if I want Zuzu to be an ambassador for dogs, then I have to allow her diplomacy to shine through. Yes. And um, so and, that's And if we an- take that and extrapolate it to an even more philosophical level, she's a lovely ambassador in that she is going to be generous and open and forthright, whether you like her or not. Yes. So if we could be that way with others... You know, I, I am who I am and I'm here and I'm open and I'm interested in you, but I'm not going to invade your space. But, you know, I I think that she idea of mother won't let her invade her space. Well, there's but... that, you know, <laughs> but but that she's she's welcoming and she's open to interaction when when others are open to interaction with her. She's she's there. She's not like, well, you didn't do it right away, so I don't want to be your buddy. So right. Well, the other thing is, as I've also noticed too, um, especially if we're dealing with other dogs, well, except for the one who was so, so snarky with her, and she just didn't get it. Um, that um, she's taught me to moderate myself because when we're meeting other dogs, if it's a little dog, she loves other dogs um, because she's big and she can be enthusiastic. Some little dogs are scared of her because she's a big black dog. But it's so funny to me because when I see her approach other approach little dogs, she's much softer mm-hmm. than when she approaches. Like today, we met um, an English Springer Spaniel, and they were like, "Oh my God, we're the same size! Oh my God, we should bounce! Oh my heavens, we should run! <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my heavens, we should!" You know. So her enthusiasm for dogs her size matches their enthusiasm for her, and she's much gentler with smaller dogs. Smaller dogs don't always get that. So I'm very careful with her with small dogs because they can, she can like just leaning over them to sniff them can be intimidating to them. But she's also taught me that it's important to moderate one's, um, oneself Mm -hmm. to the situation. Mm -hmm. That's not denying who you are. That's not, um, saying I'm, you know, being false. What it is is saying, I'm trying to appreciate the situation and adapt to it so that others remain comfortable absolutely yeah she's a genius so, well which is amazing because that's not usually the term <laughs> i use to describe her um, she is she's i tell people she's not necessarily the smartest dog i've ever owned but she probably is is one of the sweetest she has got to she's just a dear she's a very sweet 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 individual and um, I am, if I hadn't been convinced of it before, I am certainly convinced of it now that um, we had a Shih Tzu that taught me this, which was um, there's more to life than intelligence. Mm-hmm. And um, there is being yes. kind, yeah. being sweet, being gracious and excited at the existence of others is I trade that for intelligence any day yeah. in my dog. Me too. Me too. We had a dog years ago that the family phrase was Lucky's just as smart as she can be. And she was, she couldn't be very smart, but she was just (laughs) as smart as she could be. And I have many times over the years joked that I am the president of the dumb dogs club. Like people will tell me, Oh, I want a border collie. Oh, I want a Jack Russell Terrier. And I'm like, I am not smart enough to live with a border collie or a Jack Russell Terrier. (laughs) I'm like, I like the happy go lucky kind of laid back. Maybe it's going to take a while to figure this out kind of dog. I love that in a dog. So I I think uh, intelligence is an awesome trait for many dogs, but it's not the first thing I look for in a dog. I look for the personality traits. Oh, oh, absolutely. Because you have to live with that. You have to live with those traits every single day. And I am not smart enough to live with that. I'm not. (laughs) It's like I don't own a flock of sheep or goats or or chickens or anything that that my border (laughs) collie could herd. You know, unless he wants to do the ants, because we had a small ant invasion. 
So, uh, but I don't think that that border collies herd ants. I don't um, think so, but perhaps they're very smart. They could study up they, on it. <laughs> that's right. I'm sure they could. They could read Will. Uh, what is it? Wilson. Oh, no, he was more on bees. But um, the other thing I was going to say is that Zuzu has also taught me about medication. Mm-hmm. Um, when Zuzu first came to us, she was 16 months old. Um, I, I probably have told the story before, but I'm going to just give it real quick. Um, my Bingley had died in June or July of uh, 2016. And um, we were found ourselves dogless, which was a very bad, unusual state. We, had, spot. we hadn't been dogless for over 30 years, something along that line. Anyway. I was married for a long time, have been married for a long time. I still am married. I think it sounded (laughs) bad. Um, Anyway, um, so when we, we, we took a trip and when we got back and my granddaughter was born and um, I had called the breeder and said, I know, what are your breeding plans? What are you thinking of? Because I was thinking you need another flat coat. And she mentioned that she had this dog that, well, she wasn't going to breed. And once you meet Susie, you understand why she was not going to be bred. Um, but she was thinking she needed a home and that I was the one person she was thinking of that she would give Zuzu to. So I said, okay, well, let me get through the birth of my granddaughter and I get Zuzu. Now, when I pick Zuzu up, she's 16 months old. She has lived in a house with nine other dogs and two adults and seen kids on occasion, but she's never lived with children. So I take her home to my house, no other dogs, four adults and four kids. Zuzu was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, being a a bit of a scatterbrained, nervous sort, um, it was really hard for her. And she was having a hard time adjusting to the kids. So I started out with some homeopathic stuff or or some, some, uh, um, I guess, more natural things. And then ended up putting her on Prozac because... I just really felt like I had to get her anxiety under control before I could do behavior modification with her and the grandkids. And it was, it was amazing. It, it, it really started to make a huge difference to the point where she, you know, she had developed some idiopathic behaviors and they lessened and um, she really did work well with the kids to the point where they would invite her out to play with them in the yard. And now whenever I Skype with them, they're like, where's Zuzu? So, I mean, they don't want to talk to me. They want to see Zuzu. (laughs) So I really learned the value firsthand of medication in in allowing this dog to really become the loving dog that I needed her and wanted her to be. Yeah. And so that was um, very, in some ways, humbling for me, knowing that I couldn't just do it as a trainer. I needed help and she needed help Mm -hmm. and the medical intervention gave us the help we needed. Well, now that we haven't been living with kids, I had, I took, gosh, I think it was three months to wean her off of the Prozac. Mm -hmm. And what's funny now is um, I do still have her on uh, Xylokine, which is a, a, you know, a a milk-based product. She's become a little bit more interested in noises Brad said to me the other day, he goes, why is she barking so much more? And I'm like, I think it's because she's off her Prozac and we're paying attention to these things. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I don't think it's enough that I'm going to put her back on. But it's just a reminder that, um, you know, we all have idiosyncrasies. Mm-hmm. And uh, my job with her is to reassure her that just because the neighbors have come home, the world has not ended. Mm -hmm. And the brain is wired to notice and think things are bad when, when, you know, when the alarm goes off that the neighbors are home, we should probably bark about that. That is how our brains are wired. So if she was a little bit anxious about that kind of stuff, that is how that will manifest. Right. But I'm still glad I took her off because the idiopathic behavior she had before, like the sucking on her toys or on her bed, those have not come back. And so I think that overall her anxiety is lower. It's just she's just like, "Mm, not quite so chill. Yeah. Well, I've always thought the best phrase for medication is that um, medication opens the window for learning. And then Mm -hmm. 
you may be able to take the medication away and still have the new behaviors that you have layered in there. But without the medication for some dogs, some of those new behavior patterns will just not stick because they're too anxious or they're too upset by something. And so that's, that's what you had. You, you taught her how to be a member of your family, um, with the support of medication in a way that made her happy and comfortable and well adjusted. And now you've been able to taper off of that, which is awesome. So you could do that. It opened the window for learning. Right. And, And when you said that, I was thinking about a a client of mine who, um, had a, a little dog, um, not only was this dog, uh, this is a little ninpin, came from um, probably from a, a very bad feeding situation. Anyway, it was a rescue dog and it had a very difficult beginning. And anyway, this little dog is on a fairly high dose of Prozac, plus a DAP collar, plus xylokine, plus, you know, various other things. And any time we try to take one of them away, the dog falls completely apart in order to be able to function and have a chance of thriving, a chance of, of being um, a, a real dog and, and enjoying his life. He must have all of these things in place because mm-hmm. he was just, I guess, for lack of a better term, too damaged when yeah. they got him. And so, you know, I, I also realized too, that for some dogs, as you said, it's just, it is a lifelong thing. And, um, but so many of the drugs now, are, are so safe that it, it doesn't it, it, the long-term effects side effects are, are not that serious if you have them and they usually if you have side effects they show up relatively quickly anyway and if your but, dog had diabetes you would treat that for life and so if your dog has right. severe anxiety you can treat that for life there's no judgment or shame on that um, right there shouldn't be any you know if it's yeah, necessary that's right. <laughs> That's right. So anyway, so um, Zuzu has has uh, taught me a lot of things. Um, the thing that, that I guess one of the other things that, that Zuzu has really taught me is that well, one thing Zuzu does, which is just hysterical, she is, as my daughter labeled her, the awkward cuddler. <laughs> she does not know how to cuddle really well i mean she loves to cuddle it was that living with nine dogs and two humans she's much better at cuddling with dogs she's just that human body is so weird to her (laughs) i know well like when we go to bed at night she'll jump up in bed brad will be reading or working on his crossword and she goes after him she just throws herself on top of him and nuzzles 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 and stops and then he scratches her ear and she sighs and moans and <gasps> and then she nuzzles and nuzzles and nuzzles and then she flips her. So she's very awkward when she cuddles. <laughs> but it has also taught me that you can show affection in a lot of different ways. That, you know what? It's fine. It's who she is. And it's in its own awkward way is incredibly enchanting. And so the fact that, that she's awkward doesn't matter. Yep. So when my grandkids are awkward or funny or do something odd, it's kind of like it's their Zuzuism. Mm-hmm. And uh, don't we I, can't? Why can't we all be loved for our awkwardness? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, there's incredible power in sort of leaning into that and, and recognizing that. I always say uh, Valentine's come in all shapes and sizes, you know, so like there, there are many ways of showing love. Um, One of which was when my husband got a dead mouse out of my car. Um, I was like, that's probably one of the nicest things anyone's done for me because I was flipping out. (laughs) Um, And I'm like, you know, you can show love by leaping on top of the crossword puzzle and uh, (laughs) demanding a little attention. It's a little awkward, but hey, it counts. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. But well, Zuzu's really, I mean, truly my dog, but I got to tell you, she's got a, Brad has this, it's, he calls it his superpower. He can rub a dog's ear like nobody I have ever met. He can make any dog absolutely melt by the way he rubs ears. I mean, I try really hard, but it's not nearly what he can do. He said, it's my superpower. And so when he comes home, especially if he's been away for a couple of days, she's always like leaning into like, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mom really tried, but she so fails at this. Um, so, 
the other thing Zuzu has is also yes, Zuzu, there's somebody at the door. Um, has taught me is is to appreciate not only her own his her awkwardness, but she truly appreciates the individual talents that mm-hmm. we have. And so to to look for and appreciate those unique qualities that every person or every dog has that makes them special and enchanting in their own way. Yeah. So you're a good girl. Zuzu has been pretty enchanting. She has. So well, I think that's it. I think that that's, a, I mean, I'm sure she's taught me other things, but they're not coming to mind. Those I are, think that's those probably... are good life lessons from our friend Zuzu. <laughs> yes, Zuzu. <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, thanks, Colleen. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Your Family Dog. Got questions? Interesting ideas? Colleen and Julie would love to hear them. Call 614-349-1661 or visit www.yourfamilydogpodcast.com to share your thoughts. Hi, this is Julie again. If you enjoyed this podcast and any of our others, we would really appreciate it if you could give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google, wherever it is you get your podcast, because that helps us to get out there and talk to other people who also love living with dogs. Thanks.